In this video tutorial, we want to use the previously captured calibration data and set up a clean 2D mapping on the screen. For that purpose, we use the Mapper 2D and load the previously created project. In order to have the same interface set up, go to View and hit Use Default Space. We now should have the same interface set up. After we have opened the project, the interface of Mapper 2D is now activated and in this interface we have on the left side the projection channels of the system and the mapping that we will use for projecting content on the screen. In the middle part we have a 2D unwrap of our projection channels on the screen and on the right side we have a pipeline where we can define exporters later on. And we have also a 3D view in the middle that shows 3D representation of our projection setup similar to the 3D view in the creator. Here on top we have a toolbar that allows us to show several previews on the screen. To have a quick check of our calibration results we can show a grid on the screen and in my case I use a preview grid rectangular that matches my type of screen. If I would have a dome setup I would have used a circular grid. If my screen would have been a polar mapping, I would have used a polar grid instead. We can now see on the screen that uh, our lines are well aligned to the screen and we have no double imaging in the blend zones, but we can still improve the mapping on our screen. One thing is we might want to adjust the edges of the projection to really match the screen edges and I have some areas missing on the top of the screen which are not filled by my projectors, I might want to cut off these areas. And I might want to have a defined aspect ratio in which I want to project content on the screen. In my case, uh, full HD 16 by 9 aspect ratio would quite well fit the screen. For that purpose, we adjust the mapping settings, which can be found here on the bottom left part. We can adjust the borders of the mapping. For my screen type I can adjust the border by changing the heading min and heading max um, values as well as the pitch min and pitch max for the bottom and top edge of my projection. So if I change my heading min you can see in a 3D view how my mapping representation is moving and also in my 2D view you see how the mapping changes. And if I hit the preview grid, my projection changes accordingly. So I now try to touch the border as good as possible on the left side. And also on the right side. And to get the aspect ratio right, I can have a look here on the status bar. And there I can see my current aspect ratio of my mapping. It's currently 1.61 to 1. And an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 would be 1.77. I can change the aspect ratio in my case by moving the top and bottom of the projection area. Since I want to leave the left and right border where they are, right at the screen edge. So I would use the top border. And we can have a preview on the screen. This also leaves out the errors which my projectors are not reaching. And small adjustment to the button edge. And now I have a perfect 1.77 to 1 aspect ratio. So if I later project content on the screen, it will not look stretched. Another important thing in the Mapper 2D are the so-called cutting rectangles. You can see them in a 2D view. These are these white rectangles here in the middle part. They define which part of the content are rendered for each projection channel. So in a media server, 
the complete content area might be filled with content, but if I use multiple computers and multiple outputs on several computers, not the whole scenery with extreme large resolution is rendered for each projection channel. So only these subparts are rendered. They are usually generated. You can see here in the cutting tab, they are auto-generated. So they just enclose the complete area for each projection channel. But in some cases, uh, you might need to have unrotated cutting rectangles in a given layout with a defined overlap. And we can do so by going to Extras and Layout Cutting Rectangles. There are different options to layout the rectangles. Either if you have just one row of projectors, you can use a horizontal lay layout. If all projectors are vertically in one column, use vertical. Or if you have a complete grid, several rows and columns, it's the last option. That's what I need here, since I have two by two projectors. The next page I can define how many columns and how many rows of projectors I have. And I can give the system a desired overlap. If my projectors would be in portrait mode, I could switch here the orientation of projectors so the uh, mapper would generate rotated cutting rectangles for me. So after laying out the cutting rectangles, we see a clean layout of cutting rectangles. And this is quite handy for screen setups like this, where I really have columns and rows. If I would have a dome setup where all projectors are rotated and one projector is in the middle, so no clean column row setup, then I would suggest to just keep the auto-generated cutting rectangles. With these cutting rectangles generated, let's check how much blend zones I have left over. Uh, we can check this by using previews and I will use a preview cutting. Now I see on the screen for each channel we have a wide area that is the intersection of the physical projection for this channel and the cutting rectangle that is defined for this projection channel. For example, the top left projector is this big, like the blue mesh, and my cutting rectangle is smaller, so I cut off a part on the right side. The vertical blend zones look okay. I have enough blending here. On the left side, I have also enough blend zone. On the right side, this might be a little bit too small, and I could manually change the cutting rectangle here. So I could just increase the vertical extent and move the cutting rectangle around. And check the overlap again. So now I have a wider blend zone on the right as well. When I'm happy with my cutting layout, we can create a more advanced preview, including warping and blending on the screen. To do so, we can either use the export menu, go to preview. This would allow us to make a single shot export or preview. A better way to do this, also for defining exporters later on, is to use the pipeline editor and add a step, add a preview step. The good thing about all the steps added to the pipeline editor these steps and other settings are stored in the project persistently. So if you open the project later on, or after you do a recalibration, all your settings are still in the project. So here for the preview, we just need to select a source image file, keep blending and clipping enabled, and hit run step for running the single export step. We could also use a run pipeline, then all steps in the pipeline will be executed. But now we currently just have one step in the pipeline. And after a while, when blending is calculated and the warping is calculated, everything uploaded to the pattern generator, we see our final result on the screen. 
And if we are happy with this result, we could now continue to export for several media servers or we could export general purpose data for, we could export for war software and we could also export for warp units and projectors with warping capabilities integrated. So this was my quick introduction into Mapper 2D. Thanks for watching.